This spreadsheet is not necessary for beginners. It will be useful for those who have been bartering for a long time. Before you start using it, you need to summarize all changes from the warehouse and enter into the table. After that, you need to set the upper limits of the changes. This is an optional setting. And press the button Add to Barter. Next, you are need to determine the horizons of barter. These are the sections that you are use. If you saw the horizons, then barter will look like this. For example, you can remove material islands. And click the Define button etc. You can remove all non-silver exchanges. In the case when coins are not needed, resources are not needed and we do not go to Margoria, it is important to know that if you change the horizons of barter, then the barter sheet must be empty. But for the sake of clarity, I will set an example on fully expanded horizons. Next, you need to select the craft level of the main barterist. Let's say it will be Master 1. Next, notify the spreadsheet, is a health worth it for exchanges on Halkoven Island, will he change Jerko Island, is a health worth it on the Old Moon Guild Carrot for exchanges for the Old Tree Bark. And is there a value pack on the account? In order to update the date, just click on it. The spreadsheet itself. Gray cell. Columns X slash X is responsible for Y Islands. If you need to completely barter the Louisiana Island, 6 exchanges out of 6, then you need to put the number 1 in the left gray cell. If you need to make only 1 exchange out of 6 for Louisiana Island, then you need to put the number 1 in the right cell. But as a rule, if a cheap resource drops out in exchange, it is better to make a full barter on the whole island. Further cells work according to the same system. If I want to make barter on Tinbera Island, all two exchanges are out of two, I will put the number one in the left cell. If I need to make only one exchange out of two on Tinbera Island, one will put the number one in the cell on the right. The main thing is to know that all exchanges are made exclusively at the maximum rate, one to three only. The blue cell is responsible for the blue islands where the green changes barter to blue changes. For example, the Austra Island. If I need to make barter the Austra Island, I will put the number one. If I need to barter the Taramura Island one to two, then I am crazy. I will not do such exchanges. The next cell is responsible for the yellow islands. For example, I want to make a barter on the Tigris Island. Therefore, I'll put the number one in the cell on the left. But if I want to barter on the island of Shrina and make two exchanges out of six here, then I will put the number two in the right cell. The next cell is responsible for the Red Islands. For example, if I barter the Pujara Island hole, I will put number one in the left red cell. If I need to make only one exchange out of four, then number one, in the right cell. The next group of cells is responsible for 10 million exchanges in Margoria. They are divided into two parts, the first is Margoria 1, these are cheap exchanges, this is where a basic parley of 46,544 is required, and Margoria 2, this is an expensive exchange, where a basic parley of 58,180 units is required. I do not advise anyone to travel to Margoria for such an exchange, but if you do not want to receive maximum silver from barter, then welcome. If I change cheap Margoria, I will put number 1. This means that I am doing all three exchanges at one point. If I want to make only one exchange out of three, then I will put one in the right cell. Margoria 2 cells are set in the same way. If I want to make three exchanges on expensive exchangers in Margoria, then I will put the number three and make all three exchange points. That is, I will make nine exchanges. The next group of cells is responsible for coins. The first group of coins is Margoria 1, according to the same principle, Margoria 1, these are cheap exchanges in Margoria for coins, where the base parley is 46,544. For example, on the battle raft of Rantinia, 
But Pocky's battle rap refers to Margoria too. It's an expensive exchange. If I change one Rantinia, then I put the number one in Margoria one. If I am doing several expensive coin exchanges in Margoria, then I will put in as many numbers as I need to make exchanges. For example, I need to exchange his crow top ownership and shipwreck naval ship. I'll put the number two next to Margoria too. The next cell is responsible for island coin exchanges. For example, if such an alignment falls out and you need to change one island, then I put the number one on the island coin exchanges. I will warn you right away that such coins are not profitable. If you put the number one, it means that I will change all four exchanges on this island. That is, I will fulfill the island whole. The next cell is responsible for two islands at once, for Kashira and Hamid. If I need to change only one of these islands, I will put the number one. If I need to exchange both Kashima Island and Hamad Island, then I will put the number 2. The next cell is responsible for Durko Island. Finally, the lowest cell of the Koi's Island is responsible for the Hakoven Island. If I make one exchange there, then I will put the number 1. And he won't let me do more exchanges. The next 4 cells are responsible for Material Islands. In Vernon Island. If I need to make such an exchange on the island of Invanen, then I will put the number 1. The next cell is responsible for Marka Island. If I need to make an exchange on Marka Island, one will put the number 1 next to the letter M. The next cell is responsible for Nebnum Island. If I want to barter a 5 million changes on Netnum Island, I'll put the number 1. But if I want to make all 4 exchanges of this green changes for this material, then I will put the number 4 and put a tick next to it. Then the spreadsheet will know that I changed the green changes 4 times on one island. The next cell is responsible for the Aberdeen Island. For example, if I need to change one 5 million for the Aquila's flower, I will put the number 1 there. But if I need to change all 6 blue changes on this island, then I will put the number 6. And be sure to indicate with a check mark that I am not changing the 5 million. I am changing the blue changes. The next cell is responsible for the Dellingyard Island and Invernon Island when the pictures change on them. If I see all tree bark being exchanged on Dylan Hart Island, then I will do this exchange. In the first cell, I must indicate the amount of old tree bark that this island offers me. 367. In the next cell, I must indicate the price at which I will sell this bark. 22,500. The next cell is responsible for the price of the landscape painting of a tree. It is worth 1,100,000 silver. If I want to barter of the Dellingyard Island I have to put the number 1 here. If I want to barter of the Dellingyard Island and there will be a similar barter of the Invernon Island, then I need to put the number 2 here. And remember to fill in the next cell. The next cell is responsible for the Old Moon Guild Kark. When 3000 vinegar is exchanged on it for a thousand of an old tree bark, then I fill the cell as follows. The top is the amount of vinegar. The next is the price of one vinegar. The next is the amount of the old tree bark, which is offered for one exchange. And in this cell, you need mark the price for which I will sell the old tree bark. When I put the number 1 in this cell, it means that I will make this exchange. This spreadsheet will tell me that I should use two vouchers for this roll. The voucher is named the Cross Trade Voucher. In order to completely take a parley for the Yellow Islands, you need to click on the yellow field next to the inscription roll. And then the parley from the two vouchers will be fully utilized. If there is no desire to exchange the Yellow Islands, 
but you need to exchange only the red islands for the remaining parley, then you need to click on the red field next to the roll inscription. In this case, the parley of the two vouchers will be fully utilized, but care must be remembering that all of these seven exchanges will be offered by barter. As the barter progresses, you can mark the island spend. If you make an barter on a green island, you need to click on the white field of the green strip. The spreadsheet will assume that this exchange has been completed. If you click on the white field of the red stripe, the spreadsheet will consider that full exchange has been made on one red island. All other white squares work in exactly the same way. If you made a mistake and marked the exchange without performing it, then this action can be cancelled. On the right are parley numbers. If you click on the left side of this field, then one complete barter is cancelled. If you click on the right side of this field, then only one sub barter will be cancelled. All other cells work on the same principle. Above you can see a progress bar, which depends on the parley used. When the first roll is completed, the second roll and the third roll are filled in the same way. After the end of the barter, the new barter button is pressed. The table is cleared and ready for new use, and a line appears in the archive that reminds you of what you have done that day. In addition, there is a statistics archive that summarizes all your actions on a monthly basis. Now I'll show you how to plan a barter row with my example. The 1 to 3 blue barter are strategically important, so I calculate them first. 1, 2, 3, 4. Next, green barter. I only perform 1 to 3 green barter that do not exceed the upper bounds of the green storage. Balanced stone pagoda, above the upper limit, which is 200, I don't change it, Kong shell ornament. Below 200, I'll barter. Opulent marble, below 200, I'll barter. Total, 2 green barters. Further, white barter. The upper limit of white storage is 50, below 50 only, an unidentified ancient mural, a rat toy and a naval ration. The mural is exchanged for a cheap resource. I will barter it. The raft is exchanged for an expensive resource. I will not barter it. The naval rations are exchanged for beer, and beer is quite expensive now, so I will ignore this barter. Total, I will only do one white barter. Next, Dellinghard Island. 367 of old tree bark at 22,500 for a painting that is worth 1,100,000. Number 1 means that I will be due all to later on this Dullinghard Island. Old Moon Guild Carrick offers Dar Anas, so I ignore this barter. Next, I am planning a red barter. Only 5 millions on the islands, no lagri. 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All other barter I will do on the Yellow Islands, which bring the maximum profit. In order to calculate all the remaining parley for such exchanges, I need to click on the yellow field next to the inscription roll. If I want to use the Crow's Trade Voucher, then I need to exceed this figure by at least one unit. In order for the inscription one voucher to appear here, then I can click on the yellow field again, and the spreadsheet will calculate my parley for me without remain, so that I completely barter all the yellow islands. The weight calculator allows you to calculate the route in such a way that there is no fatal overweight on the ship and the character. And there was an opportunity to unload it where there is no port. Where there is only a pier and you can only rely on your own inventory. In the table of weights, you can change the capacity of the hold, the capacity of the bag is the character's inventory, the weight of the equipment on the ship, the weight of items in the bag or in the inventory. 
The weight of the sea crystal is the parameter of the maximum carrying capacity by which the sea crystal increases your useful cargo. The weight of the sailors is indicated here. With this checkbox, you can remove the sailors and put them back. Here you can mark how many LT at this or that parameter and check or uncheck this checkbox. Next, you need to fill the cargo. In my hold now there are 2 white men and 12 blue changings. After the first barter, I give 2 white changings, get 6 green ones. On the next barter, I will give 6 blue changings and get 12 yellow ones. The same thing will happen on the next barter. And in this way the ship will be overweight. In order to avoid overweight, at some of the ports I have to put 6 green changes in my bag. Then the overweight on the ship will not come. Only the character's bag will be outweighed, and fatally, so that I could not add anything to it. In order for the overweight not to turn red, then you need to increase the basic capacity of the bag. If the figures for the hold's weight increase and turn red, this means that there is a fatal overweight and you will not be able to make any further exchanges. The buttons at the bottom clear the fields. After a certain amount of time, you will be able to monitor the statistics of your barter in the archive, and also, on the monthly statistics pane. This spreadsheet is based on Microsoft Office Excel, it does not work in Google Spreadsheets. Who needs a link, it's in the description, bye.